look at you all. How many do you reckon? It's definitely more than 300 people and there's another 100 people um, outside uh, and in a church listening to music out there. Um, I don't know if any of you kids know, does anyone know why they're here tonight? <laughs> other than to listen to great music and run around outside with each other. Um, we're here because we're saving St Bridget's. And you guys, all of you here tonight are saving St Bridget's and we'll thank you for that. Um, St Bridget's is uh, this church and hall and the surrounding area. The church was built in 1914. This hall was built in 130 years ago. Um, it used to be the school, the Crossley School, and many of you are the children, or you yourselves actually went to this school and have amazing childhood memories of this precinct. And uh, for our community, these buildings have been central to our education, our social life, um, our family life, um, the happy times when we baptised our babies in the church and the sad times when we farewelled our grandparents and relatives and parents, brothers and sisters. Um, these buildings hold an incredible spirit in them for our community and I know that because you're all here tonight you understand what that means for your own communities if you're not from here. And this is not an exclusive feeling. We, we all have that feeling about the house that we grew up in or the park that we used to play in as a child. Um, it's not just an emotional thing, it's a very, very deep and strong connection to these buildings and not just the bricks and mortar but all of the memories that, um, that occurred in these places. There's an amazing photo that you might see on the slideshow when you go out for a cup of tea of the Crossley Hall when the lights were turned on for the first time in the 1920s. And it looked a lot like this, yeah, except different outfits. But, you know, it was, it's exceptional how when a community comes together, even in a photo that's, you know, nearly 90 years old, that you get a deep sense of how connected people are by their body language, by the fact that kids are climbing on their mothers. And we've got a place over here for our elders to be safe and warm for the night. And there's teenagers running amok outside. And this is our community. And even if you're not from here, we welcome you here tonight um, to be part of our community. And most importantly, why we welcome you here tonight is because we actually need you. We need you to help us hold on to these buildings. For those of you who don't know the full story, this, these buildings are currently up for tender. And on July the 17th, the tender will close and we run the risk of losing these buildings forever. Uh, it's an emotional subject for our community, but it's also uh, a very, uh, it's become a practical problem for us. How do we hold on to our buildings? How do we keep them going? Um, how do we make enough money? How do we finance? a plan to actually hold on to our buildings. So three years ago, when the doors closed on the church for the last time, within a month, the community got together and formed an association called the Friends of St Bridget's, and that's us with the black T-shirts and the green design. Um, but you can have one too. Um, <laughs> they're outside for $25. Um, so we formed this association, and we've met every month, if not more regularly, for the last three years to come up with a strategy. And our strategy to hold on to our buildings is this. We want to convert our church into an Australian Irish Cultural and Heritage Centre. We want it to house the history, the unique history of our community. Uh, since the early 1800s, Irish people have come in their many. And for a lot of those, those years, 99% of the people who lived in Killarney and Crossley were Irish Catholic. And the only one who wasn't was usually the publican. So <laughs> now that's not an exclusive thing, but that is the absolute essence of what this community was formed on. It's different now. Yeah, you look at the statistics from the last census. You know, um, there are people from all denominations, from all religions, and from all backgrounds. Yeah, we have old people, young people, families, um, but we are repopulating. In the 1950s, a lot of people left rural areas because there wasn't much money in farming. So they left here and of course the hall quietened down and the church got quieter and in time I guess it isn't really viable in that period of time. But there's 1,600 people living in the 3283 postcode and 400 of those are under the age of 14. So we are a vibrant and thriving community and we believe that that's enough people 
to maintain this hall as a community centre and to also keep our church running, not as a church, but keep the building alive by converting it into a cultural and heritage centre. We have an enormous amount of historical photographs, documents, stories, information in people's homes in this area. And we are absolutely determined and have already started to collect this information so that we can actually have a really unique cultural centre that, that actually um, reflects the culture of a lot of South West Victoria. And we are a really amazing culture. Um, you look at all the musicians here tonight, we're a living culture. You look at young Will Ryan, who lives in Kalani. What a great talent, yeah? We have this incredible capacity. Look at our beautiful dancers who meet every Tuesday night and dance with Geraldine Ryan and learn those beautiful dances that their parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, all the way back to Ireland have been taught and how proud it makes me feel personally as a mother to watch my children living a culture, not just talking about it. Um, we're really serious about this. We need you to help us raise enough money for the deposit to buy our buildings back so that we can keep them. Now, we're not asking for the impossible. We're asking for as much as you can give. We're asking you to go home and say to your friends, hey, if our community was under threat, you know, surely we'd chuck in 50, 100 bucks, you know? If you know someone with more money than that, that's fine. Uh, we are tax deductible, so that's okay. Um, this is absolutely central to everything that our community does at the moment. If we lose this hall that you sit in tonight and we lose that church, all of a sudden, we don't have anywhere to meet anymore. We don't have anywhere to have these gatherings anymore. Our musicians don't have anywhere to play, yeah? These buildings were built by farmers in the early 1900s. That church was built to house their community. And we believe that it's our responsibility as their great-grandchildren to hold on to those buildings. It cost £6,000 in 1914 to build that church. That's a lot of money for people who were working the farms. And not only did they pay for them, but they also took the horse and dray down to the Illawa station and picked up the bricks, brought them back here, and brick by brick, the farmers of Kalani and Crossley built that church for our community. And we want to share them with you. We don't want to keep them for ourselves. We want you to come to this hall. We want you to come to the cultural centre. And we believe this is a great model for the survival, not only the survival of our community, but maybe all rural communities that no longer have the church as the focus for their community. Now, I know not everyone agrees with us in the community, but we actually believe in what we're doing. And your faith in us here tonight has given us great strength. And there are hard times, and we have to meet with banks and lawyers and do things that, as artists, we may not necessarily feel comfortable with. But we do it because this is what our descendants did. And I want to thank you all for being here tonight, and I want you to understand how important it is for you to be here tonight. Um, we, we have our fingers and toes crossed that we have the successful bid when we go for tender on July 17th. And whether it's successful or not really depends on not only the generosity of our small community, but also on the support and generosity of everybody else who knows about our situation. So I ask you to spread the word and help us, and I promise you, on behalf of our community, that your generosity will not go unnoticed and we will not let you down. We are serious, we are determined, and we have great faith in all of you and in each of us, everybody in our community. I, um, I'm here on behalf of my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents, and I stand strong in the community where I come from and I know all of you do also. So enjoy this wonderful night. Um, have, enjoy every minute of it. This may be the last time we're in here. It may be the, the very night that we say, do you remember when we saved St Bridget's? And you're part of that, all the way down to the little kids at the front of the hall here tonight. So I give you, um, I give you, um, yeah, I'll give you thanks and uh, I hope you enjoy yourselves. Please feel free to come up to any of the Friends of St Bridget's and ask any further questions. Um, what an exceptional group of people you are and how beautiful it is to look out and see all of your faces here tonight. Thank you very much.